In the system's life cycle, we're moving on to documentation here. This may seem like a quite a trivial subject in the large scheme of things when you look at um, systems analysis from the outside and you start to realize that it's about looking at an existing system, finding what the problem is um, through analysis, then designing something, uh, agreeing that that's okay, and then actually implementing that, then going through some testing of that to see if it does the job that you intended it to do. It may seem like a bit bizarre to suddenly start um, lumping uh, documentation in here, but in fact it is absolutely crucial and that's what we're going to look at here. Now it may seem a little bizarre to be asking that question of what does documentation cover first of all before you even start to look at what the specific um, pieces of documentation are that are produced but I think if you look at that it allows you to reflect on all the work that's been covered so far and in reading those questions there it should start to trigger in your mind the different elements of systems analysis we've looked at um, especially when you start to th think of w individual questions like that it should trigger memories of the specific elements. If it doesn't you need to go back and revise um, the different elements of the system's life cycle because it's clear when you look at that which bit you're talking about. Number one's talking about a particular bit, number two's talking about another bit, and three and, and so on. But especially in those early stages one, two and three, it should be triggering exact specific elements in the systems analysis life cycle. If it doesn't, go back and look through the other elements again, either through the previous uh, vodcast that I provided or the notes or both and if you read this alongside the notes um, as you should do always with this and on all the reading around it you'll see how it all begins to fit together so relating back to the previous slide when we asked the question of what does documentation cover uh, this particular slide what documentation is there really answers those questions we basically got a requirements spec and that goes back to analysis in the systems life cycle and then the production of a design specification, that piece of documentation that comes from the design element. The program specs and indeed the, um, some of the technical documentation will come through implementation. Now I'm quite aware I didn't cover implementation as a specific podcast from the systems life cycle and there's really no need because that's just the bit where the program has put things together and developed the system. That could be a small job, a medium sized job, a large job, there could be a team of people, it could be a couple of people indeed, it could be part of the work of the actual person who did the analysis and the design. It depends on the scale of the operation. And some of the technical documentation will come through that. But the evaluation will produce some of the technical documentation as well. And from the implementation and evaluation will come the user documentation. The last of these. As already mentioned, program specification, program specs as I've called them here, are put together at the implementation stage. So if you try and uh, imagine you've got programmers sat there who may be working on different elements of a system, let's, let's look at it in terms of quite a medium sized to large sized system and they're all working on their different elements and then there's somebody trying to coordinate activities. Now it could be that a programmer has to as to name a variable for instance. Now at this stage you may be thinking to yourself what's he talking about but in programming this is quite common. Now it may be that one department of this business or this organization um, calls uh, something by a particular name and they want to carry that forward or a programmer wants to give a variable a name but it could be that that same name is used again by someone else and that's going to cause confusion so you have to make sure that uh, the understanding of what particular variables are is, is coordinated by everyone so that the same, news, same names aren't used for two completely different things which could cause conflicts, confusion and indeed there's some understanding of exactly what's in the new system and how it correlates to the old system as well so technical documentation is largely made up of, uh, of three things. They may not always be in there, all these three things, but commonly they are. And I've tried to give you some some understanding of this graphically rather than just list them out. Uh, this will this will suit some of you, but you might want to just list them out of bullet points if that's a better way to learn. I've tried to put some symbology on this so that you can understand that program specs and the program itself and hardware configurations are the three elements. As I say, it doesn't matter whether you, you think of it graphically like that or you think of it in terms of the actual bullet points. 
that are there. It's just that's the three common things and that's really what you need to uh, memorize. What is absolutely vital though for technical documentation is that you remember the word technical. Technical is what it's about. It's for people who are going to be involved in maintaining or further developing the system. If you have trouble remembering more than one point, just think of it in terms of maintenance. In other words, who's going to be coming back and fixing things when it goes wrong and everything goes wrong? If you think of it in terms of the network you work on in a college or a school, say the school you're at at the moment, think of the job that the technicians do in terms of finding out problems, looking at where uh, adding things or installing things, they want to know what's previously been done, they want to know the specifications of a certain program or a or the, the architecture of the, of the network in a particular area, what relates to what, what's talking to what, and all these kinds of things. They want to know what's what's been done beforehand. So if we're talking in terms of programming, we need some we need to know the rules. We need to know um, all notes reasons that certain things have happened in the past. So this is no way intended for anybody who's using the system for the people sat there doing the job from day to day in other words inputting data, taking things out this is for people behind the scenes, the technical people hence the name technical documentation again here I've tried to use some um, some symbology to make it easier for some of you to understand if you remember that uh, the I on the left hand side is input and the O on the right hand side is output, I've used them before um, and then we've got some um, way of representing installation and some way of representing error messages there, um, second from the left and, and second from the uh, from the right as well. Um, so this is for user documentation, and those are the four really key elements of user documentation. If you've ever read a manual, this is really what's in any manual for any piece of software. For a game you may have bought, for uh, Windows, for Microsoft Office, although so a lot of the times this is um, given on a CD now or you can access it via the web, traditionally these would be given in paper form, it doesn't really matter and indeed some of these in a system that's created by any systems analyst now would be given online or would be given um, on screen. But the important point is to look at the fact that it is user documentation, it's for people using the system to input, to get things out to indeed install the system or it reinstall if they had to do that as well although we could be getting into the technical things there as well and any error messages that come up so that it allows them to keep using the system um, obviously some of those error messages may relate to technical things and that's something they may have to pass back to the technician who may have a more insight to this so there will be some crossover but there's a clear definition between user documentation and technical documentation that's for people at the front end using the software, the other one's for people who have to maintain, fix, develop.